Hello, my name is David Withers. I'm the Managing Director of Izeki here in the UK. And we're continuing our series of virtual demonstrations during this coronavirus uh, epidemic. We're not able to bring the machines out to you in the normal way. And so we're going to give you these videos uh, so you can at least see what the machines are doing. As ever, we're not breaking any rules here. This uh, paddock is near, near my house and the person on the camera is a member of my household. So we're not breaking any of the coronavirus lockdown protocols here. So what machine are we looking at today? And I'm very excited about this one. This is our SF450. This is the largest in the SF range of products that we do. There's an SF224, SF235, and then this one, the Beast, an SF450. So if you imagine the others are just scaled down versions of this. So what have we got here? Well, you look at it and you initially say, well, this is obviously a cut and collect machine, which it is, but it's a lot more than that. We can do a variety of jobs with different implements that we put on the front. So sometimes we have a rotary deck on the front that can rotary uh, cut and collect or cut and drop. In this instance, we have a flail on the front, uh, which is made for us by our colleagues in Muthing, and that can cut and drop or cut and collect. And we can also fit verticut blades to it, so it can be used as a verticutter collector as well. So we're going to spend some time looking at this machine today. So we're going to start by looking at the engine and the rear of the machine here. So to get at that, first of all, I need to lift the box. So I'm going to have to start the engine here. Pull back on this lever and the box goes up. Okay, that's that. Let's it on. So then, if we're going to be working on the machine, or I'm going to show you what's under the engine here, we do first of all need to put these safety stops in place, one this side, and then there's another one this side as well. Obviously, if you're just tipping the grass, you don't need to do that, but we're going to have a look at the engine, and so we do need to uh, just put those in place. That locks everything, even if there was a hydraulic failure, it wouldn't come down and hurt me. So now we need to get at our engine and to do that we simply lift up the hood here and that gives us great access to the engine. So we'll have a look at the engine next. So what we have here is a four uh, cylinder Izeki 46 horsepower diesel engine. And one of the things you may notice as you look at this is the great access that we've got to get at everything around the engine. Over here we've got the air cleaner, there's the hydraulic oil cleaner there, the main oil cleaner here, uh, belts are just there. So you can really get at everything uh, that you might need to for general servicing and maintenance. For routine maintenance, such as checking your oil, you can see the dipstick just here. Uh, that you can get at without having to lift uh, either the bonnet or the collector out of the way. Also see this large capacity radiator here, got an electric fan on that, which periodically reverses, which blows any chaff that might have built up on this uh, screen here away and make sure it keep, keeps the cooling of the engine really, really good. So once you get yourself in the seat, and it's a nice suspension seat uh, with a rake adjustment as well as, uh, uh, as hand rests, uh, you're gonna have a look at the controls here. So obviously we've got steering wheel here. This is all adjustable. I can, I can move this forwards and back and tilt it so as to get it in exactly the right position for your own comfort. Gauges across the top, fuel, hours and temperature. And then you come down here to the main controls that are gonna control the uh, collector and the flail itself. So we have two buttons here, this one and this one, which is either the full speed fan for if you're just doing normal collecting, you're chucking everything in the back. If you're in relatively easy conditions, then you can use the economy setting. And then th this button here actually turns on uh, the front implement. Final button over here that you can see is an override button. When the machine senses that it's full of grass, that the collector is full, it will send off an audible warning. There'll be a buzzer that goes off. You have the opportunity to override that and continue mowing for another eight to 10 seconds, just to enable you to finish the little bit you're doing before you go back to um, empty the grass. Other than that, you've got a beacon light, the hazard warnings, and then your usual lights indicator horn stalk on the left-hand side here. So I'm sat on my nice, comfortable air suspension seat and I've adjusted my steering wheel to where I want it to be. And I can look now over at these controls. So you can start here. This is the uh, lift lower for the front implement. So I can lift up this flail. Um, this lever is what I use to raise the body, uh, the collector at the back. And then this lever would actually dump the grass out. I can actually dump it at any time during that lift. I don't have to lift it right up uh, before I tip that out. 
Down here you can see I've got two pedals, forwards and reverse for the hydrostatic drive. And you may have noticed as well that we've got standard lights and mirrors here. Uh, they, they, they're all road legal, ready to go as standard. On this side of the machine, we've got the handbrake, cup holder. This is the air intake for the engine. And then down here I have a brake, I have a diff lock, it does actually have an automatic diff lock system. If it senses that the uh, wheels are slipping, then it will lock the diff itself. But there might be occasions where you want to override it and put it into diff lock anyway. And I can also set my cruise control. So once I've got my forward speed set, I can press this button and that will lock that forward speed into place. And then the main controls down this side of the machine. It really is a very clever piece of equipment. There are so many machines, people say are multi-purpose, you can change it from one thing to another relatively easily, but the reality is they have to go into the workshop for that to be done. That simply is not the case with this machine. So there are four bolts here, 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 and here. I've taken three out already just to speed up the process, but we undo these four bolts. Just gonna take that one out and pop it there. This then lifts up, and in a minute, I'm gonna show you how it works when it's collecting. So it was in collecting mode, I take this part out, and I'm just gonna pop this back in here, like that, okay. I push that down, and now I've gotta pop my bolts back in, so I'd have to put my four bolts back in the hole to do them up. That is now a cut and drop flail, not a cut and collect flail. It's that simple. So I want to show you how the actual collecting flail element of this works. So running through here is just a standard rotor, rotor uh, with the flail blades on it. They cut the grass and they throw the grass back and the grass gets into this double helix. And this is spinning like this. And that moves the grass into the middle, into this central area. And then you can maybe just see back here, there is that central trunk that takes the grass up and throws it into the collector. So we're going to make some passes through this. You can see this is kind of just around about knee high grass. We've got some thistles, cow parsley, stuff like that. Fairly unpleasant stuff. You probably wouldn't normally uh, encounter this with this kind of machine, but we're going to run, run through here and have a look and see how it uh, copes with that. So let me just jump on and uh, put my seatbelt on. Yeah, seatbelt on. And we start the engine. And now we're going to engage the blower. Hear the blower start. Now we're going to engage the flail. We rev it up. And break off. Let's just do a little pass through here. I'm not going to go very quickly because we are processing a tremendous amount of material here. So if I go too fast, however good it is, uh, it won't be able to cope with it. So you should be able to see if you look behind me what kind of a finish we're leaving and what it looks like. I'm just going to turn around here. You can kind of see there already. We're just ploughing through it, collecting it all. We're not leaving anything behind. Everything's being collected. Just do one more pass just to clean up that bit that I missed. And then maybe if you just have a look here, you can just see it's just cleaned everything right up. Already, since through that knee high grass that you saw earlier, you know, you can't go really fast through it because you're processing so much grass. But we're just going along nice and easily, cutting through it.
So you can see there, we've done two or three passes through that foot high grass, taking it down to about 75, 80 mil in one go. So you can kind of see the difference here. I've left that last little bit there as a comparison. But I have got some clips of this being used in even more extreme conditions than this. So we just had the beeper go off to indicate that the uh, collector is full. So we'll just have a quick look at that before we go and tip it. So I think you can see there, one of the great things about using a flail mower is it chops up the grass smaller than a rotary does. And that really packs it in. So you get a really full, uh, full capacity hopper there. This is a 1,300 litre capacity hopper on this machine. And so you can mow for quite a long time before you do need to empty it. Okay, so we've uh, filled up the hopper with grass and now it's time to tip that. So I'm going to start off by lifting it up, as we did earlier when we wanted to have a look inside. And I'll just back up uh, just a fraction more here. So as I said, it doesn't matter where I tip it, you know, in terms of how high it is. So we'll just have it that high and we'll go ahead and tip that and you'll see that come out. Look at that. It comes out into a huge amount of grass there. And then we're just going to close that back up again. And then drop it back down again. And there we are. Ready to mow again. So we're actually in the hopper here now. Uh, we just tipped the grass out. So you can see that square tube at the back there. That's where the grass comes up from the big impeller. And then at the top there, you can see there's kind of a chute. That oscillates from left to right. And what that does, it means you get an even fill of the hopper. So you get even more grass in the hopper, as opposed to if it just came straight out where it would fill the center and it wouldn't fill the edges. That's why we get so much grass into the hopper. So that's our Izeki SF450. What an amazing machine for a contractor or a local authority, where perhaps today you have one machine that does your flail work, cut, cut and drop, and then you have another machine that does your cut and collect. With this, you could have one machine that does everything. What about for a golf course? We could use this machine for hoovering up all of the debris and leaves in the autumn. You could put the scarifying blades on it, verticut and collect at the same time on your fairways, as well as maintaining your rough areas. It really is an incredibly versatile machine. And there's so many customers out there who would benefit from this type of a unit. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing that video of the SF450, as I said, a really versatile machine for so many uh, potential users. Well, we've enjoyed making this uh, video as always. It's been great fun to try the machines out in various different conditions. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Don't forget that during these difficult times, our dealers are still open. So if you need parts, you need service for one of your existing products, or you're interested in buying a new product, don't hesitate to visit our website, check on your dealer locator and find out who, you, who your local dealer is. They're there to support you and they can supply all of those services in a safe and responsible manner. So once again, thank you for uh, being with us today. I hope you enjoyed it and please stay safe.